Her Excellency. The Assembly will hear an address by His Excellency Jose Gabriel Carrizo, Vice President of the Republic of Panama. I request protocol to escort His Excellency. I have great pleasure in welcoming His Excellency Jose Gabriel Carrizo, Carrizo, Vice President of the Republic of Panama. I invite him to address the Assembly. Madam President, Heads of State and Government, Mr. Secretary General, ladies and gentlemen, Honorable Mr. President, first of all, I would like to thank God and the Virgin Mary for allowing us to be gathered here. And I ask them to illuminate the work of this plenary session. I convey to you the greetings of His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Panama, Laurentino Cortizo Cohen who has tasked me with representing our country before this General Assembly. Moreover, our country fully aligns itself with the fundamental themes proposed for this session of the General Assembly. We share the view that to overcome the global health crisis and advance in realizing the post-pandemic transition, we must promote creative solutions, share a greater level of solidarity, and encourage science as a fundamental ally in the face of the challenges lying ahead for humankind. The necessary transformations call for knowledge, research and education tools, especially in nations with high levels of poverty, where millions of people continue to lack the options to live a decent life. Too many continue to die of hunger, while others simply have indigestion. It is a selfish act to concentrate rather than to share knowledge. President, the current government of the Republic of Panama has been in office for 38 months, 30 of those during a pandemic. No other administration in the history of Panama has faced such complex challenges. In light of this situation, we are focusing on saving lives, avoiding the collapse of the health system, and maintaining social order. Two and a half years later, we stand on the cusp of recovering from the damage caused by the global health crisis, and we continue to move forward. Indeed, here we have exceptional results to show the world. Ladies and gentlemen, our national strategic plan has been designed to combat the causes driving poverty and inequality. We took the helm of the government committed to laying the foundations for deep-rooted transformations. It's true that we are a country with robust growth rates, yes, but with unacceptable levels of inequality. In light of this, we are fighting tooth and nail to redress the balance our administration aims to lay the foundations for a fairer country, to consolidate democracy and strengthen the independence of the justice system. For the first time in our history, the President, 
as head of the executive, has dispensed with his prerogative to unilaterally appoint the Supreme Court justices and has established an independent assessment system based on professional merit. For the first time in the history of our country, the majority of our Supreme Court justices are women and none of its members have any relationship, link or subordination to the President of the Republic. President, in Panama, as in the rest of the world, we have had to tackle the pandemic. Protecting human life, particularly of the most vulnerable, was our inalienable goal. We demonstrated creativity and innovation, developing technological tools to provide direct care, access and equality to help our population. We transformed our national identity document into a tool to allow us to transfer resources, a true free debit card, if you will. We were the first on the continent to implement a centralised traceability and monitoring system for communicable diseases. Every infected person is registered in the National Epidemiological Surveillance System and in real time. We prevented disruptions to schooling for school students during the lockdown using the ESTA computer platform. This is an example of a resilient educational transformation strategy. We guaranteed free internet access to the vast majority of the student population, including in remote communities. The Medic App platform is currently un under development. This is an innovative digital inventory that lets citizens know which medicines are available, where they are for sale and comparative prices in real time. We offered to share these experiences and advances that have been recognised by international organisations, including the United Nations, with the international community. President, I fully share with our President Cortiso the steadfast belief that dialogue, civic participation and consensus build social peace. By way of example, in the full throes of the pandemic, we promoted the initiative that we called the Bicentennial Pact to Close Gaps. It was designed to be a meeting point for Panamanian society to outline the sort of country that wants to look ahead to the future. A country with common welfare that is prosperous, safe and peaceful. 186,182 proposals were freely submitted as possible solutions to problems felt by the population. From this broad consultation, national agreements emerged responding to the true concerns of the Panamanian people and designed to extend beyond government terms. Instability of fuel prices also caused demonstrations and protests in Panama, fundamentally due to the rise in the cost of food, medicine and gasoline. Instead of confrontation, President Cortizo chose dialogue. In our country, we did not have to mourn a single death during those protests. Our style of government has enabled agreements and consensuses on the needs most felt by our population. The national government has set out specific provisions and measures and 
It's very important to note this. We have been able to guarantee social order during this time. In the global context, dialogue is the only way to shrink the space available to extremism. Ladies and gentlemen, affordable medicines are the difference between life and death. With courage and political will, President Cortizo has decided to tackle this situation. With that in mind, he instructed me to form and coordinate the National Medicines Commission to ensure a supply of medicines for our population with much lower prices than we see currently. The pharmaceutical industry, the manufacture, supply and distribution of medicines around the world is supposedly an ally in terms of health. However, we are concerned to see that millions of people are unable to access medicines. The situation has become both mercantile and mercenary. Oligopolies make disproportionate profits from the medicines they distribute and sell to states and individuals. Such a system, which is shameful to humanity, cannot continue. It is everyone's responsibility and its global implications must be examined and addressed. Access to medicines must be valued as a human right and not seen as an expensive and luxury commodity. Panama proposes to this General Assembly President the adoption of a global initiative that resolves ex excessively high prices and the lack of access to medicines for citizens of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, Panama is a transit country for irregular migration. Thousands cross the Darien Gap on the border with Colombia every day. This is a dangerous and hostile journey where they risk their lives, they fall sick and die. But the situation extends beyond transit migration. It includes and conceals criminal organisations whose main activity is the nefarious business of human trafficking. Our government has adopted a state policy to address the needs of and to help migrants, guided by a sense of humanity and solidarity. We stress the possible solutions to this painful and regrettable situation must include countries of origin in which poverty and social marginalisation fuel irregular migration as well as those of us who are the recipients of these flows of migrants and, in particular, host countries. President. Our government believes that the current development model needs to be transformed. This means considering the value of biodiversity seeking healthy and sustainable ecosystems. Panama is one of the three countries in the world that have been declared carbon negative. 35% of our national territory and 30.5% of our seas have been declared as protected natural areas. More than 80% of our electricity generation comes from renewable sources. In July this year, we set a new record. 95% of our national grid was fed by clean energy. We are eighth in the world in, in, in clean energy generation. 
President Cortizo's energy transition agenda has cemented Panama's global leadership in combating climate change. As Panamanians, we are historically aware of the value of our geographical location, defined by the presence of the Panama Canal and the role it plays in the world economy. We are a country with a vocation to protect natural resources. We hear harsh criticism from young people about the series of fora, summits and declarations on climate change and environmental and natural resources protection, all playing out against the backdrop of unchecked rises in emissions, deforestation and water, aquifer, river and ocean pollution. How can we gain the trust of new generations while the planet on which we live and on which our descendants will have to live is being decimated before their eyes? How many more lives must be lost? How many more natural disasters unfurl? I wonder, when will they stop the ecocide? To the large emitters of gases, to those who promote deforestation, to those who pour away the chemicals that pollute and kill, we remind you that the survival of the earth and the species on it is at stake. Panama declares today before this Forum of Nations that the time has come for the world to have an international body that demands accountability from all those who cause damage to the planet. President, the future depends on every decision we make now. Going in the wrong direction and then trying to correct it is no longer an option. The path of conflict and war leads to further calamities and disasters. It is the wrong path. Panama, due to its location, its ethnic and cultural plurality, is an open country and a meeting place. Panamanians, living alongside one of the main maritime shortcuts in the world, at the centre of the American continent, are always ready to serve humanity, as we have done for centuries. Today, before this General Assembly, we want to decisively say to the world that it can count and will always be able to count on Panama. Recent times have changed our era. The world that was is no longer. The challenge ahead is to build another world, a better world, with the right answers to ensure human health and life on this planet, our home. A world with more solidarity and peace. We must do this we will always be much stronger together. Thank you very much. On behalf of the Assembly, I wish to thank the Vice President of the Republic of Panama for the statement just made, and I request protocol to escort His Excellency. The Assembly will hear an address